This is Wandering Universe. Happy New Year to you all. Yes, we have arrived. It's 2023 and hopefully there will be some change for the better because we most certainly need some. This year I will continue to bring you more exciting videos to fire up your insatiable curiosity. Dishing up delicious topics that will tantalize you to question rusty theories and dubious opinions whilst you have that refrigerator moment. So, without further ado, let's get on with it. Today we're going to explore something out of the ordinary, somewhere far, far away to a place less travelled. So, let's go exploring. Welcome. Yes, as you can see in front of you, it's Earth. Don't know why it's called that, but it just is. Now, where are we going today? Well, later on I'm going to do a video about space and exploring other planets within our solar system and outside our solar system. And these lovely nebula, colourful clusters that go along in this Milky Way galaxy. That'll be for another time. So, let's spin this beautiful ball around and we're going to go somewhere in the Northern Hemisphere. Now, what are we going to explore in the Northern Hemisphere? To the people who live in Europe, you are just in the middle of winter, so I believe it is freezing cold. I wouldn't want to spend my holidays at this time of year. I prefer to be here in Queensland where it's nice and hot humid and tropical weather. Occasionally we get cyclones that bring in harsh thunderstorms and let me tell you we really do get a bit of a light show around here. Okay so let's go right in. Before I do I'm going to show you something a little bit interesting. Okay as you know this is the North Atlantic Ocean. From here there's something very interesting underneath it. Now let's follow this this fault line right here. Just follow where my arrow is pointing. Okay so, as you can see, this is Europe, a green blanket, a giant green quilt, okay, all knitted into one. Now, from here is the North Sea, you've got the Norwegian Sea, and over here, you've got a lot of underwater land masses or submerged land masses, as some people put it. What's interesting is that this fault line goes almost directly to a land bridge that connects to Iceland. I'm going to talk about this later. Something interesting about this particular fault line that is connected to this area. I'll talk about it later. As you can see, there's a lot of um, submerged land masses here. No, we're not going to Britain, and we're not going to Ireland, and we're not going to go to the Scandinavian places. I know they're gorgeous and wonderful, but I certainly wouldn't want to spend my holidays there. So, we're going to go right in. Where are we going today? Here we are, yes. You can see right here. Yes, the Faroe Islands. A tiny, tiny cluster of islands nestled in between Iceland, Norway and Britain. Or England, or United Kingdom, however you want to call it. Okay. Now we're going to go right in. This island right here is part of the UK, just to let you know. And now we're going to go right in. Now before I do, before I do, I'll just come out a little, a little bit, sorry. Just come out a little bit. Okay, so as you know, that's Greenland. That is the Barenta Sea and also it's kind of linked with, well it's actually linked with Russia. So we're not going to go into that today. But it's interesting that it stands alone, in, sandwiched in between these continents. Now, we're going to go in, right in. There isn't a whole lot, I will say this. When I was exploring these cluster of islands, as you can see in front of you, there isn't a whole lot of information about the Faroe Islands. I will say that. There isn't even much much of a mention in tourist brochures. It doesn't matter which travel agent you approach, there isn't a whole lot of information they can give you. It is an interesting place, freezing cold in the winter and very mild summers, 
the temperatures in summer can go up to 22 degrees and that's actually pretty pleasant if it's a nice bright clear sky day so these are the islands right here okay very small nestled in the middle of almost nowhere underneath it is a very large landmass submerged landmass so these are this is what you're seeing after the melting of the ice from the last ice age now where are we going today in these islands now as i go in as you can see google earth will show yes it's under a lot of snow at this time of year all right so as you can see there's a lot of mountain peaks right here and a lot of these mountain peaks contain these concaved backs meaning these backs dip in to create this pointy apex and i'll show you what i mean later on i'll just go out a little bit and as you can see they spread out along the coastline and the cliffs are very tall very high and the seas are pretty rough especially around winter time it is very rare that you do get calm seas around the cliff face of these small islands okay now i'd just like to ask you an interesting question just curious if anyone has been to the faroe islands please let me know in the comment section below i'd like to know i would like to go one day to visit one of these islands nestled within the faroe islands and discover something different unusual out of the blue don't know what but i'll let you know but in the meantime if anyone has been there let me know in the comment section okay we're gonna go in now there's something very very interesting this is the island of vidoy and this area is called i'm not very good at pronouncing scandinavian words but please bear with me it's called vidariidi i think this is called vidariidi i think it's called that please correct me if i'm wrong and nestled within this island right here as you can see it's separated by a bridge that connects to both islands and separated by a long canal of water from here there are several islands with strong mountain peaks very sharp going a little bit closer what are we going to explore today well we're not going to explore these mountains and no we're not going to explore this mountain and we're not going to explore this mountain either we're going to explore this mountain okay and i'll pronounce the name later in the video so you can have a little co contest to see who wins the correct pronunciation okay this before i go on these are sea tunnels I don't know what they're used for if anybody knows let me know in the comment section this is what they have next to the peak sorry next to the base of this peculiar mountain and as you can see just next door to it there's an another large mountain peak that faces directly towards this majestic beauty and here there's a nice little township nestled at the base so if you wish to travel to this area as part of your bucket list or your to-do list or you're just bored write it down dare yourself to go on a journey once on a lifetime adventure i mean who knows you might find something that could just capture your imagination okay now i'm going to give you a little view yes you're going to have a view all right i'll give you a lovely 3d so that's this is what it looks like at the top and this is what it looks like here. Okay, enjoy.
that you've had a nice view, I'm actually going to leave it as it is, as it's moving around for your own viewing pleasure. And now we're going to explore the Faroe Islands. Enjoy. Europe, the continent of all continents, all knitted together like one giant green quilt. It is not alone. It has a group of islands as their next door neighbours just up from the North Atlantic Ocean, all separated by the vast sea. A group of islands that consist of the United Kingdom, Ireland and Iceland. Further out from the Norwegian Sea, there are two tiny islands nestled along this path, Jan Mayen and Faroe Islands. The Faroe Islands is a group of tiny dot islands sparsely merged into one. Call it a castaway of islands huddled in the northern region. These tiny tot islands contain an abundance of rippling mountain terrain sprawled along every coastline and every landscape covered in a blanket of green moss and prairie grass. These tall, sleek and mighty mountains metamorphose its shape over the millions of years of mountain making, flirting its figure as an exotic eye-opener. The word Faroe derives from the name Faroya, meaning land of islands. Its landmass of undulating lines, blending in its rocky texture, complements the evergreen valleys, quiet snowy mountain villages tucked away near small settlements at every mountain. The only downside to maintaining its Scandinavian postcard charm is the harsh cold winters and mildly warm summers. Overall, these mountains along with its cute, red house townships offer a touch of class, making its natural bounty an explorer's wonderland. Faroe Islands is not high on the priority to-do list for tourists, you don't say. Well, there isn't a whole lot of information online, let alone a mention. When I came across these glorious mountains, I couldn't help notice something odd about them. But before I get into the meat of this mystery, let's go on a short road trip guided by a video from Creatively Explained. The point is that these islands are beautiful and interesting, so let's learn what they are. The Faroe Islands are located in the North Atlantic Ocean, halfway between Iceland and Norway, and about 300 kilometers north from Scotland. Well, technically 260 kilometers north from the closest place in Scotland, North Rona Island, but as this place is uninhabited, I don't think it should count. Composed of 18 islands, this archipelago covers a surface area close to 1400 square kilometers, which is comparable to the size of New York City. There are about 1100 kilometers of coastline, and the farthest away you can be from the ocean at any place is 5 kilometers. The highest mountain is Slatteratindur, peaking at 882 meters above sea level, and the average elevation for the Faroe Islands is of 300 meters which is 10 times more than their parent country, we'll get to that later, Denmark, whose highest peak Molohov is 171 meters high and has an average overall elevation of 34 meters, second lowest in Europe after, you guessed it, the Netherlands. These 18 islands are divided into 30 municipalities and 6 general regions. These are from north to south, Norvojar, Esturoy, Stremoy, home to the capital, Vega, Sandoy, and finally Suvoroy. The capital Torsawan is home to about 20,000 people representing 40% of the total population of a little over 50,000. 
This means that all of the Faroese together could not sell out Camp Nou Stadium in Barcelona. They would actually fill about half of it. Because of the warm currents coming from the Gulf Stream, temperatures in the Faroe Islands are much warmer than other places at similar latitudes. For instance, Yakutsk, Russia has a mean average temperature in January of 38.6 below zero versus the 4 degrees you would normally find in the Faroe Islands. As winters are mild and summers cold, one could argue that seasons don't really, really exist in this area because 1. Temperature variations between winter and summer is very little and 2. The climate is heavily influenced by the dramatic topography of these islands, so temperatures and weather conditions vary drastically throughout the day. Get the picture? I guess you can say this is one area I'd like to sink my teeth into. Besides, there is always something interesting popping up on my screen. And in case you didn't notice, I happened to come across the Faroe Islands whilst browsing for images of the Giza pyramids. Mountains, mountains, mountains everywhere on the Faroe Islands. An ideal winter wonderland that speaks volumes. These mountains are certainly not shy of their magnificence flexing their sturdy slant surfaces, uneven rocky peaks, and their outline ridges that get a constant battering from the onshore winds. Their rough exteriors get a hard workout from the belting sounds of those taunting seas over millions of years. These scarred walls are evident of its brute force. Like a string looped around the triangular body, makes it complementary to the round, smooth, rectangular peaks. They have survived many geological challenges that cultivated their natural trilateral dimensions. Although this part of the world is less explored, it resonates a flair of enchantment, enticing hikers to explore a unique, one-of-a-kind alpine wonder. To go globetrotting around Europe to places like London, Paris, Rome and other cities are okay, but they don't enlighten me. I guess you could say I like getting out of my comfort zone every now and again. Rattle my curiosity in search of mysteries that hit the inside jackpot. Well, something did. I found one mountain, out of many, that is a cut above the rest. This mountain. It's different, unusual, and a killer of a hike. It is called Mellingsfowl Mountain, facing directly to Villingardalsfowl Mountain located in Vidoy, near the ancient settlement of Vidaidi on Vidoy Island. It is the third largest mountain in the Faroese archipelago. It stands at a mighty 750 metres tall with its solid rock exterior made from ash and magma. It displays its near-perfect trigonal shape resembling a pyramid. Compare Khufu Pyramid to Malingsfowl Mountain. This mountain dwarfs the Giza Pyramids. Its pyramidal contour exhibits its cutting edge angles elevated to a sharp peak. The apex shows a smooth rectangular platform. From the Villingardasfal vantage point, it looks like a four-sided pyramid. But if you take a closer look, it actually has three sides with a concave back. You can see the horizontal lines traced around the rugged side of walls. The rigid horizontal lines entwined around the mountain gives the impression that it was a trying attempt at creating some kind of step pyramid but with indented shallow steps. If you notice each layer doesn't line up precisely with the first, the first two steps line up together but there is a big gap between each step. After that, it evens out with each step reaching to the summit. 
the apex itself has a deceptively sharp point that forms a rectangular podium. It is uncertain whether an object was placed on top of it or left as it were. The side angles look jagged, giving it a ripping effect. Dressed it up, potentially camouflaging a geometric engineered technology. Was it purposely done in this fashion? Along the front of this wall, there are a few straight lines descending vertically down to the base. These engraved lines indicate water had cascaded down the sides, acting as runoff. It sits comfortably on a huge bed of rock. Think of it seated on a giant plush velvet cushion draped in green moss. The outer crusty edge protrudes its massive border, letting the vine roots tape around the first layer. No one truly knows what lies underneath it. From the base, it gives the impression this mountain is held up by a floating pontoon. In fact, the concave part is attached to an elongated cliff that partners to a nearby mountain. Around the base, you'll see blunt edges that curb outwards into the water. Holding up its tremendous weight is bedrock dredged deep down to the bottom of the ocean. This pyramid mountain seems to have been elegantly draped with a silk gown from head to toe. The skirting fan open loosely to the sides. Compare it to this 50s cocktail dress and you'll see what I mean. Near the midsection, there are a few vertical lines drawn out to the nearby town. But the bulge edge takes a wide turn as it angles over to the other side. This extraordinary pyramid mountain has never been analysed and studied by anyone in the archaeology world. As they see no reason to voyage thousands of kilometres to dig up a solid mass that presents no substantial artefacts. Question is, was this mountain the work of nature or by the hands of others? There is hardly much mention on this mountain online except from Hikers Daring Trek on their blog page. So, what is the big deal, you might be asking? Well, this isn't exactly a walk in the park, but I'm getting the hunch that it may have left some hard to find clues that could explain otherwise. There is very little evidence to pinpoint man or other beings as the culprit makers of this pyramid mountain. However, this mountain has been debated online, throwing a few conclusive theories without expert opinion. Some say it is pyramid shaped due to laid volcanic sediments with layer after layer of loose ash and lava. Others point to wind erosion that enhances sharp edges and water erosion to create round edges. Whilst others question the regularity inclination of the angled edges, the squaring of the faces, the huge bedrock base, the rectangular platform making their case inconclusive. For others, they have gone as far to say it was once a big garden terrace sprawled around the wall of the mountain. An invention derived from cultural tribes in ancient times to aid in potential growth to the island as part of its survival adaptability. Then, there are the geological few who claim from their observations it was a volcanic rock moulded into a triangular shape over millions of years along with erosion that hammered a pointy peak. Whilst others say it has less steep with a naturally formed flat-topped or dome-shaped peak. Think of it as a gambrel-style roof. This pyramid mountain is one of many extinct volcanoes scattered along the islands. So, what do you think? Are you leaning towards naturally made? Or man-made? Or is there another explanation to this mysterious structure?
Exploring this wondrous beauty has stretched my imagination, to the point it has speaked my mind. Somewhat. So, here it goes. What if this mountain was purposely created to look like one, to camouflage an inbuilt pyramid? If so, why this specific location? Why so particular in housing and engineered coil technology embodied in stone? It could be possible, I'm not saying that it is, that this mountain could be a lot older than the Giza pyramids. If so, does the constellations correlate along the celestial equator? But did it serve an important function? Or was it made by nature to metamorphose a pyramid? You know, create the illusion of one. Whoever they were, were ingenious. They had the gold standard in pyramidal engineering. Mountains like these were not created overnight. It took millions of years through pressure and time to shape its unique form. These ancient volcanic beauties will not give away their secrets anytime soon. To estimate the age of this pyramid mountain, you need to take into consideration climate change and environmental causes, such as the Himalayan mountains, thanks to millions of years of pure erosion. These mountains erode at a rate of two meters every 1,000 years. One author who theorized on origins of ancient Egypt, author Comins Beaumont, suggests the true origin of Egypt began in the British Isles. He wrote in his book, Britain, the Key to World History, Egypt in Northern Africa was a later colony or continuation of the earlier civilization destroyed by a cataclysm, hence the Greenland asteroid. Even more so, the Great Flood that swallowed Atlantis occurred simultaneously. Is this evidence? These mountains were purposely constructed to align with the constellations along the celestial equator before they were afflicted by the Great Flood? These mountains are more than just a pretty face. They offer hidden clues to its origins. It sure beats the hell out of me to find a suitable explanation to its eccentric mystery. But I'm not giving up just yet. Stay tuned. The majestic mountains on the Faroe Islands hold no grudges and boundaries. They stand in their own right. By nature's standards, they are still a work in progress. None have been studied, excavated and investigated for further analysis of its complex design. No samples of rock, debris or other specimens taken for further analysis of its true age minerals and chemical composition has ever been published. Today, these mountains glorify its work of art, a pyramidal phenomena nature proudly claimed its one-of-a-kind perfection. If these mountains were designed and implemented to entomb a vital piece of technology, then whoever created this masterpiece were ingenious, forged in stone a feat of quantum engineering that we are still trying to comprehend, yet cannot mimic. To uncover its secret source, interred within these thick rock walls, requires time, money and a lot of patience. In search of clues that point to the presence of other life forms had once established in this region. If these mountains could speak, they would tell you a captivating story of its endearing time on Earth, spanning far back to the birth of Earth, the dinosaur era, and surviving several tumultuous ice ages. Truth can be far stranger than fiction. To say that this mountain was modified by the handiwork of other beings to make contact far, far away in the vast cosmos allowing nature to do its part. 
It is too early to dismiss any theories that point to either. If explorers were granted permission to undertake a close examination of this mountain, what they will find will change the course of our history indefinitely. In the next video, I'll be venturing off to the other side of this planet to explore another abandoned ruin along with its intrinsic riddle. That's all for now.